a few last things on Nullable before we move on from Nullable. This is the .NET Reflector. I've opened up Nullable in here just to peek around and see what's going on. You can see it has value and value, and here's the constructor takes a value and properties, just like we did in our videos. Okay, and I just want to go through the rest of these and kind of talk about what what they do, what why they're important, blah, 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 blah. Um, first of all, let's take equals. If you remember, I showed the compiler will return equal if both values are null. It'll return false if one of the values is null, but the others is not. other is not. And then if the, both values on the left and the right have value, it will delegate or just say, hey, you guys are your values equal. And Anyway, you would expect that the actual equals function would do the same thing, and it does. It says, hey, if I don't have value, then check if the other guy doesn't have value, and if the other guy doesn't have value, then yeah, equals is true. Um, if the other guy doesn't have value, and the reason we're down here is because I do have value, all right, this, this failed, so I have value, but the other guy doesn't have value, then no, we're not equal. Otherwise, just compare our values and, and decide from there. All right, get hash code is kind of interesting. If you see, if I don't have value, then I always return zero. Which, if you're familiar with hashing algorithms, um, that's going to throw. If I have a bunch of null values, they will all end up in the same bucket. All right, if you don't know hashing, don't worry about it. But anyway, fortunately, uh, the equals will solve the duplicates and the buckets thing. But anyway, if I don't have value, then return zero. Otherwise, just it's my values get hash code. You would expect the the hash code to come be delegated down to the value if we have one. Get value or default. This is kind of interesting. It allows us to ground the value no matter what. Okay, so if has value is false, meaning we are null, but I still want to, for whatever random reason, look at the underlying value in this nullable object, I can certainly do so. The reason why this is in here, C Sharp uses it for the null coalescing operator. So I can say int i gets null, I can say int j gets i, or let's do 8. All right, this might be new to you. This is the null coalescing operator, and its function is pretty straightforward. It checks its left operand. If it's null, then it returns its right. Okay, if it's not null, then it'll return the left value. So watch this. I can console right line j and in this case, since i is null, then j will be 8. Run that. You can see we have an 8. If I come here and say, ah, no, let's not set a null. Well, then that's that's 5, so it'll return 5 instead, and j will be 5. Pretty straightforward, easy operator. Well, the, the syntactic sugar for this, the compiler actually translates this. Let me, um, I'll just duplicate that and write it out how the compiler does it. It turns it pretty much into a ternary, so i dot... Uh, has value. If it has value, then return i dot get value or default. Else eight. All right. This, now remember the ternary is like an if, except it's an if that always returns a value. Okay. Ternary is an expression, and expressions always return value. So, i i has value. If it does, then get the value. Otherwise, return eight. And let's see. We here. We get a 5 because i does have some value, but then let's turn around and change it to null, and there you go, there's an 8. So, yeah, no, co no coalescing operator, you certainly could write like this, but this is much more succinct for sure, that's nice and convenient, syntactic sugar. Another way they could have done this, I don't know why they didn't, but I noticed there's this get value or default that simply says, hey, uh, I'll give you a default value, if you have a value, then... If you don't have a value, then return that value back to me. Otherwise, return your value. So they could have, uh, the compiler could have translated it to just this, like so. Let me just run. And when I is null, so we still get the eight in this case. Uh, but when I is not null, then we get the five in that case. Uh, but I, I was messing around with it. I looked at the disassembly, and sure enough, they don't use this technique. They, the compiler throws the ternary operator in there now. Obviously that could change as, as versions change, but that's the current implementation. Then the last thing I want to look at are these operators. Okay, implicit operator, 
uh, explicit operator. These are conversion operators if you need to come familiar with uh, operator overloading. Go see the operator overloading uh, playlist, but to be honest, operators are just functions, so I hope this is pretty straightforward. Let me put nullable back in here, like so, just so I can put my cursor on it and hit F12. We can look at this and say, hey, there is a conversion operator that's explicit to a T, and there is an implicit operator that I can convert from a T to a nullable T. And I'm going to do some videos on casting and implicit and explicit conversions, but the general rule is if you can lose data, then the cast needs to be explicit, meaning you need to take the safety off on your gun. If you're going to shoot yourself in the foot, that's fine, but you need to be explicit about it. Whereas if the cast cannot lose information, or, then it's okay. We'll, we'll implicitly do it for you. That's fine. For example, a noble of an int, if you think of the range of an int, let me try this out, this is like a number line, right, and here is int min value, the smallest value that an int can be, it's the negative one, there is a limited number of values an int can take on, because an int is only 32 bits, and then there's int max value as well, it's a very positive number, but if you want to get into uh, how bits are stored and why what determines that go look at my binary videos playlist and also the signed numbers and that kind of thing then there's zero in the middle here so the whole domain of an int is everything in between here all right but it stops there and it stops there well when you do a nullable type all of a sudden you get one extra value that kind of doesn't sit on the uh, on the number line but it's still a legitimate value and we call it null all right well, a regular int only has this range, whereas a nullable int has this range plus the null value. So to convert from a nullable value to a value that can no longer be nullable, there's a danger in there in that if the value is null, what number are we going to take on the number line? Okay, You're getting rid of this value, so where should I put you up here? That doesn't make sense. All right, that's why it's explicit. You must take the safety off. Uh, you must do a cast. If you want to do such a conversion, that's fine. Uh, if it doesn't work, though, you could probably get an error. And and so blowing your foot off, uh, feel free. Just make sure to be explicit about it. Now, to convert the other way, though, if I have an int that's restricted to only this number line, okay, not null, but just the number line, so it has to be zero or anything down to min value or up to max value, then that's fine. If you want to convert that to a nullable type where we wrap this one in, that's fine because this is just adding to the range here. And I know the range in here, if you're, say you're right here on the number line, it's 5,241 or some arbitrary value. If you're this, well, that's fine. It's, it doesn't hurt to go to a nullable value because you're not null, but it doesn't matter because null is just adding to the range of values you can have. All right, I hope I didn't slaughter that too much, but this is a nullable value, an int question mark, an int question mark is wider than just a regular int. There are more possible values here than there are here. So it is okay to convert from this to this that can be implicit. The compiler will do it for you. Whereas going from this to this, well, if you're null, then that could be dangerous. What, what do we map to? So let me just demonstrate that in code. Let's, let's see. I'll bring this up here, and I'll say int nullable. Actually, let's say int i gets 5. Okay, a non-nullable int. I'm going to say int nullable j gets i. All right. Well, this is a safe conversion because... I know that I, I I can convert an int to a int nullable. The nullable is not going to bias anything, but don't worry about it. Console write line J. It builds. It runs. You can see that J is 5. That is okay. But to go the other direction, let me change the nullable here and take this off. Well, now the compiler detects it. Notice the red squigglies. It says, hey, um, 
This could be null, all right? And, and the compiler won't make a static analysis, meaning it looks at this and says, well, I can see it's a 5, so this will be okay. The compiler doesn't do that. As far as the compiler is concerned, this 5 is way off the screen. It cannot see it. It just says, oh, I have a nullable type. It could possibly be null. And if it's null, what am I going to do to convert it to a, a regular non-nullable type? Ah, and so we can build that. We get an error saying, hey, I cannot implicitly take the safety off. You have to do it explicitly. All right, well, how do we do it explicitly? That's, we can. We say, well, just, it's an int. I promise. It's okay. I know what I'm doing. Control of 5. It builds it runs. Sure enough, J is 5. That's legit. All right, but then what if I turn around and say, eh, let's mess around a little bit and say, hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, I'll be null. It's null. Convert it to an int. What's going to happen? It's, it's, null is not in the range of an int. All right, that is bad. All right, let's see what happens. Control of five. Oh, ah, ah, <laughs> unhandled exception. Invalid operation. Noble object must have a value. If you want to convert this, is fine. We just blew our foot off. All right. Anyway, that's what those operators are. Are there They're explicitly? If you want to convert from a non-nullable type or from a nullable type to a non-nullable type, that's fine. You must do it explicitly, and if it doesn't work, we'll blow up in your face. Otherwise, it'll be fine. Uh, otherwise, you can go from a non-nullable type to a nullable type. That's completely safe, because this has one more value than this does. It's, it's a legitimate conversion.